Dun 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 dun. Whoa, what is this? Dun 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 dun. dun. This is gonna be different, it feels. This is setting a vibe. Oh, this is cool. I like this. This was going straight to the playlist. <laughs> okay, mob. It's mob. Tell me that's not mob. Don't tell me anything. It's mob. Is this the same group that did the Jujutsu Kaisen something Jujutsu Kaisen? <laughs> I don't know. Creepy nuts. Okay. Set in a vibe. Oh, so it's not Jujutsu Kaisen or anything that I've seen. Okay, I'm glad we cleared that up. This is exciting for me because it's a new show and I've heard nothing about it. And that's definitely the mob tunnel. A good friend of mine brought the show to my attention and I watched the preview. The sole reason that made me watch this was that I saw a character that looked like mob in a tunnel that looked like mob psycho. That being said, aesthetic similarities aside, I'm gonna try not to bring my past the biases into it. Oh yeah, creepy nuts, okay. Okay, it does have that sort of Jujutsu Kaisen Lost in Paradise feel, no? Dun dun dun. And we got aliens too. And romance. Intro overall, very cool, intriguing, interesting. It gives you the feeling like this is gonna be a special and unique experience. <laughs> I like this guy already. The confidence. I don't like him, I don't like him. He's terrible. Awful. I'm on the wrong side of things again. You were lucky enough to have the opportunity to pay for a love hotel for me. And then you blew it. That's how love starts, you know. Relatable. He was so good looking. <laughs> yeah, I get it. We're kindred spirits. Look, at the risk of sounding superficial, with the caveat that there are a lot of things that are more important, I do think people downplay the importance of physical attraction as one of the criteria in a romantic partner. I think there's this sort of rebalancing that happens where, you know, the natural instinct is to go for attractiveness at the end, and then that perhaps gets a little bit overcompensated for, and it's like, looks don't matter at all. I think being with a really good person with whom you're really physically attracted to is tops. That's the best. To get even more controversial, I see a lot of people react to romance horror stories with, I would never let someone treat me this way. And my response is, Maybe it's true for this person. Maybe. There are people who have figured it out. My gut sense, though, is in the vast majority of cases, what that means is they've never dated someone they were that attracted to at that level. If you end up dating someone who is, in your book, with your tastes, a 10 out of 10 physically, and you are not prepared for that, everything goes out the window. There's nothing wrong with liking masculine guys like Ken Takaroka. Takaroka. Haters. They've given up on life. <laughs> Ken Takaroka, he is not. Oh, interesting. If this is insincere, don't do this. If this is insincere, don't do this. Okay, if it's really good hearted, that's great. Don't play with this boy's emotions. Okay, alright, it's a relief. That's how love starts. With whom? <laughs> oh, you blew it. I just hate injustice. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, we got another occult club. Trying to talk about Mob Psycho Challenge Impossible. This is barely a cult, though. Oh, you went a little bit too far. Mistakes were made on all sides. Oh, this, that pang of the conscience. A little harsh, and she felt it. You went a little... Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he was a bit much. He came out a bit strong, but you don't gotta hit him and then you got no friends. I mean, if he's got no friends, he, he knows he has no friends. He feels that he has no friends way more importantly than you could ever feel he has no friends. There is no reason to point that out. And even if there is a reason to point it out, there's a better way to point it out. His true powers and potential have yet to awaken. Rough. This is great because, you know, for one second she's not thinking about her breakup. Not that it seems like she would be thinking about it that long anyway.
もし見ることができたら、綾瀬さんだってパシリになってもらいますからね。For how long? I feel like we need to be more specific about terms. That's how they found aliens and ghosts, but also found each other. あんた人体実験受けたことあんの受けた可能性はあります。はアブダクションを受けた人の多くは記憶を消されてますから。He's not really thinking this through because if she gets abducted, I don't see how she's gonna be his gopher. I mean, even if she comes back, she won't remember. そんなことよりそっちはどうなのさ Oh, they're doing it simultaneously? There it is, the mob tunnel, already. <laughs> Just throw up? <laughs> what was that? What are you wretch? Panic wretching? Oh, she's getting very personal. That's really what it is, it's not about the ghosts. I was actually talking about something like this with a friend earlier. There's certain behaviors that can be grating on the surface, but sometimes looking like one level deeper as to what they're actually oriented towards totally robs it of its fangs and may even make the person more endearing despite their, their issues. There are some people who will use certain conversational tactics or social causes or contradicting something you've said in a condescending way because their actual goal isn't the information or the issues or whatever, but stepping on your neck to bring you down lower than them so they can gain a new rank relatively, even though really nothing has happened except everything's gotten worse. There are other people who will do those same behaviors, but if you really look closely, they actually are not doing it condescendingly. They actually are trying to get along with you. They may have a great deal of regard for people and have warm hearts. It's just that like they've learned this somewhere as the acceptable way to socialize. Or they spend a lot of time in a very closed group and they're used to a certain style of communicating or a certain manner of signaling that they want to be seen as good people and they're sort of putting themselves in your hands. It's rarely as simple as it seems. So like even before she talked about her grandmother, I was thinking, it has nothing to do with aliens, probably, or ghosts, rather. Someone told her that there are ghosts, and that person means a lot to her. I don't think she really cares that much about ghosts, except by proxy of the things she actually cares about. And in my opinion, it's somewhat surprising how much that actually is the basis for a lot of discourse. I wonder what his entry point is. They're bonding surprisingly quickly. Yeah. Right, it's unusual. Kids hate unusual. But she loved her grandma. I mean, that's why she did it all the way to school. That's how that goes. Interesting. What makes her and this extra special is that she can articulate this. That monologue had a level of personal understanding and like understanding of complexity and nuance that I really like, but is difficult. I remember this conflict very vividly, caught in this battle between the safe, comfortable, authoritative, well-reasoned, loving side of my family from the past versus the chaotic, hierarchical, cruel, emotional, social world of my peers that was my future. Both of which obviously very important, but the new world somewhat more pressing because it was the biggest area of opportunity and future development and it's something you need to learn versus a world you, you already know. What's tough is that there's a very distinct feeling that the old world can't see the new world. You alone sort of have to bridge the gap and it can be very lonely and frustrating. It's like you ask your parents for advice and they're like, you should be a good person. And then you're like, oh, okay, but what should I do? <laughs> what are you telling me right now? How do I navigate this problem? It's, it's insanely difficult. Thankfully, time has a way of sort of sorting that out naturally. Your childhood generation becomes the adult generation and you're along for the ride. And then I think in a lot of cases you look back and even if they were wrong about certain particulars, they loved you. And if they loved you and that's why they were saying what they said, were they really wrong? So you to yeah, let's get to him. Oh, whoa, she shared. It's not fair. Why are there bloody footprints? You probably focus on the... yeah. That took a minute. I get it. Oh, hi. Oh, this is going well. <laughs> That's what I was expecting. <laughs> Why are you running? Where are you going? She's gonna gobble your weenie. Uh, like as far as ghosts that you can meet in a dark tunnel, you'd be a hell of a lot worse. No, I think that's exactly what she meant. Turbo Granny, you say? She is indeed fast. Kolkun is busy. <laughs> Do not disturb. <laughs> oh, she's gonna get abducted by aliens right now. That's the way this has to go. Oh. What do they want, I wonder, and also don't want to hear. How, how can we be each other's... Okay. 
I guess Granny is not that dissimilar from the aliens. Thank you. Very generous of you. Okay, good, great. Uh, you have... Oh no, oh no. What is this? What are they talking about? What banana? I mean, that's irrelevant right now. That has nothing to do with this. This is horrible. These are the worst kinds of aliens. This is highly disturbing from the first episode of Dan Dan, Dan <laughs> and very graphic. I never want to see that again. But oh, and the scene's not over. It's crazy that they solved humanity and then decided they needed to go back to humanity. Finally, like the end of the villain arc, we never get to see. Also, what they can't. What? I don't understand. <laughs> Did they learn this online? We need a Gojo character right now or something. I don't know what you are, but please destroy all of them. These are not as friendly as the Mob Psycho aliens. Oh, it's him. Oh, this works out. Put them against each other. How to get through the phone? It's also very Persona 5, or Persona 4. Maybe she'll get some kind of alien power. We can become a duo. It's unfortunate that that is something that he's gonna have to say now. We don't have bananas! Uh, what? Maybe you want to try the fruit aisle? I can't help you. But... Oh, it came out. That's, that's devastating. Yeah, I guess if you watch like E.T. and Mob Psycho, you might think that, but you probably don't want it. She did. It's really amazing. I've been struck with this a lot lately. It came up in ReZero. Oh, increasingly, I think it's not the display, it's not the emotion that is resonant, but the honesty. There's something so powerful about someone letting go of their outward persona, speaking of persona, to 100% be in a raw state with no guards. It's not the sadness. I mean, there's plenty of people who use sadness dishonestly, and that's kind of gross. There are people who use the, the difficulty of their lives, woe is me, etc. Because really what it is, is they feel lonely and don't know how to get what they need other than attention seeking. That's not it. But like really pure breakdowns of like, you know what? This is actually what's been going on. All ego aside, fully self-effacing to the extent that it's necessary to get to an actual truth. It just feels different. Hers was more of an expression of love, for a grandmother at least, and then, you know, disappointment in her peers. His was one of pure sadness, but it ends up, to me, being similarly resonant. Also interesting is how little it matters that it was a ridiculous plan. I mean, it's kind of dumb, you know? I have no friends, so I'm gonna summon aliens. It makes no sense whatsoever. But like, it sort of doesn't matter. I guess related to what I was saying earlier, where it's not about the words or the format, but like who and what is underneath. Yeah, that was quick. <laughs> that was a whole cycle. Maybe her abilities will finally be put to good use. Or maybe she can help Otaku kun. It's okay. Grandma probably understood. Or she just didn't need powers because she had them already. Oh, there it is. They opened up her psychonesis. Thanks, Grandma. Also, she has to be an expert at martial arts. Oh, is their spaceship like a fake moon? Uh-huh. Did you just exercise him? Of course you do. Of course that's what it is. That is too real. <laughs> Damn, Grandma! Why gotta hit me with the truth like that? Oh, that should not have hit so close to home. Yikes. Speaking of dating beautiful girls, there's that saying that a secret to a man's heart is through his stomach. 
They were close. <laughs> Got a lot of miracles. I'm in a gaudy hag, but okay. Right. Look at him all sad and weenieless. Okay. I'm sure we didn't need that building. Lucky that it landed. And you found that door immediately. You think you have a bad... My dude has no weenie. Yeah, who gets to be who's surf? We need to get my weenie back first. Okay, this is the dynamic. <laughs> he lost his weenie! This is, these two things are not the same. Can you walk? That's sweet of him. Thinking about that at a time like this. And he even folded them. I mean, we were in this together, let's be real. No, we're in this together. Brave. He was waiting for the call. Imagine going home right now. Bro, all the little superficial differences that we may have had went out the window when we had that shared alien experience. Perspective. I mean, I don't even need to go to the, my classic accepting a gift is a gift to the giver. You both survived both a traumatic alien abduction and a haunting. That's how love starts. What? Is this fate? Close enough. We got the name. Dun dun dun. Okay. Well, that definitely was a vibe. Yeah, we need this animal mascot character to round these things out. Up to this point, I would say my favorite, like, animal mascot character, it's, uh, Morgana from Persona 5. Getting similar vibes. I mean, because it's a cat. <laughs> Can't go wrong with cat mascots. I mean, this also is, like, very Persona 5. With one spirit world version and one human world version. Maybe that's the way people see him. Maybe only the kids can see the fortune cat version. That would allow him to be taken to school in your bag. Wow. Wow. I knew this was going to be an experience, and that was an experience. What a spectrum of things. We got romance, we got comedy in the occult, and we got horror in sexual perversion. The alien unzipping his pants was one of the most horrifying things I've seen in my video career up to this point. It's interesting. It feels like the mix of a lot of things I really like. It's got, obviously, a mob psycho feel to it with uh, with Ken and the occult ghost stuff. It also has sort of a FLCL feel with some of the speed and the wildness. In a word, this is fun. And there's been a little bit of snapshot of the heart. It feels like it's going to be there, which is really exciting to have both simultaneously. I think it's going to be a really great ride.